we saw about a 13% improvement on the, the second six months of last year. And that's a function of improved trading conditions in most of our businesses, both locally and internationally, and also the effects of some of the actions we took to, to realign our cost base. Mm -hmm. Let's hone in on specific divisions here. Mining first, it's in full focus on the back of rising demand, of course, and it looks to be boding well for the group so far. What kind of uptick are you seeing in this quarter specifically that you're starting to now reap the benefits of? Yes, well, mining order books have, have ramped up considerably since sort of the low point in, in February, March uh, this year. We're seeing it um, not only in South Africa, where there has been activity in, in coal in, in the Middleburg, uh, Waterberg region and uh, iron ore in, in the Northern Cape, but we've seen a resurgence of activity on the Zambian Copper Belt and also in Northern Mozambique in the Tet coal fields, which are providing an underpin to our mining order books. Is that pull from the rest of Africa getting stronger in terms of that unit providing the next growth leg? Very much so. You know, we, we saw at the, the bottom of the cycle, uh, you know, commodity prices had come off two thirds of their peak. They've recovered in some cases quite close to peak levels again. And uh, that, that's really what's igniting the renewed mining investment. Looking at those commodity prices, I mean, we've seen them run on the back of things like QE2 coming to the fore in the US, also demand from China. But with austerity measures needing to come into play at some point, and we're hearing now China possibly looking at tightening tightening its monetary policy moving forward as well. Some saying we're looking at the upside low and the downside a little bit more severe. What's your view on the current playing field? We, we are still quite optimistic on uh, long-term commodity prices and, and long-term uh, mining demand. And the, the reason for that, we still think that the Chinese economy uh, has legs and, and that uh, provides a substantial underpin to demand for commodities. But also in emerging economies around the world, there are significant infrastructure backlogs and rebuilding that infrastructure uh, requires commodities. So we think it's broader than a Chinese story. It, it, it goes to, to emerging markets as a whole and we think that demand over the next few years um, is going to be pretty robust. With that, let's shift focus to the construction side where you aren't as strong on that segment of the business as you are in mining on the rest of the continent. Would you be looking to move that, uh, grow that uh, moving forward in that the infrastructure story on the continent looks a little bit more compelling than it does in South Africa right now? That's probably right. You know, obviously South Africa had the big build-up leading up to the World Cup and we, we benefited from that. But there's been a bit of a hiatus since then, uh, not a large number of new tenders awarded. So the construction outlook for the medium term is relatively muted in South Africa. Um, we've also had a fall off in construction demand in places like Angola, but we think that will ramp back more quickly because um, of the oil price now sitting at, at the levels it is. Uh, they are getting uh, dollar inflows of revenues and, and that should reignite some of the large construction projects there. Of course, uh, igniting uh, interest not only for a player like Barlow World, we've seen a lot of uh, Chinese players uh, enter this uh, playing field as well, where they're building in exchange for resources and in some cases bringing in their own contractors, their own mining equipment as well. Just how much of a challenge is that for Barlow World right now? Look, it's a very important uh, strategic development, which you correctly highlight. We've, we've highlighted it as a major, um, not, not only challenge, but also opportunity. So we've started to employ some Chinese people into our business here that speak Mandarin, that can develop the relationships with the, uh, the Chinese contractors. We're considering opening an office in China to develop uh, relationships with the head offices of, of these Chinese manufacturers. So it's, it's an important opportunity, but, but as you rightly point out, it's, it's certainly a strongly emerging trend across the subcontinent. Let's take it further abroad. I mean, you've announced plans to buy the remaining 50% shareholding in uh, Russian Caterpillar Equipment, JV. What's the rationale there? Because at $52 million, what opportunities or potential are you seeing in Siberia and the Russian Far East? We think this is a massively exciting opportunity for us. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, in terms of the critical mass of the operation, we're still only at uh, one and a half or two in Russia. And that's because there's massive um, long-term mining potential with the proven mineral reserves with, with nickel, coal, diamonds, gold uh, across the, uh, Siberia and the Russian Far East. So we think also the timing is good. We've seen our order books build from about $10 million in September last year to $84 million in September 
December this year. Um, and uh, that sh that's really come, come about in the last six months of our financial year as, as mining companies have started to re-engage on the investment projects. Yeah, coming at a very uh, opportune time where we know there's a Eurozone situation that's unfolding and exerting some pressure on the business still. Things are still looking a bit tricky and sticky there. To what extent is this still your Achilles heel? Look, uh, the Iberian uh, market has down some 82% uh, off the peak in Spain and Portugal. So we've had a, a tough time uh, there. But we've taken a, a steps to, to reduce our cost base, to generate cash, to gain market share. And, um, and uh, we, we anticipate the outlook probably still being pretty tough through 2011 and 2012. You've obviously also gotten rid of some of your non-core assets within territories like Denmark, Norway and uh, Sweden. To what extent should we be expecting to see more shedding of non-core core units within that space specifically. No, I think the big priority for us was the Avis uh, Scandinavia disposal and again the timing was fantastic because we sold that at an enterprise value of a billion rand and of course most of that cash is, is in the bank now and gives us the ability to fund uh, this, uh, the growth in Russia and also um, the opportunity that's come about through Caterpillar acquiring Bosiris internationally which will give us a, a broader product range in South Africa. Looking at the automotive sector specifically, I mean it's pr produced good results, just how competitive Competitive though has that environment become and do you see earnings like these being sustainable moving forward? Yes, I, th I think um, you know we, we had a very good result last year in automotive, and we're up again 10% uh, this year. So I think it's been a, a very good performance. New car sales are rising. Uh, I think the car rental uh, side is a little bit more muted going into 2011 because with the strong rand, uh, the inflow of, of, of uh, international tourism is likely to be uh, somewhat constrained. But I think we're well placed. We've got good market shares. We industry leaders across most of the segments, uh, and so I think we'll have another solid year in automotive. The car rental side, just to how much of a lift did the World Cup here in South Africa provide the business? Probably not as much as we thought, um, uh, particularly in the coastal areas. What tended to happen is that people based themselves in Gauteng and then would literally fly down to the coastal areas for the, for the games and fly back up again. So we didn't see as much car rental demand as we thought in, in, in the places like Durban, Cape Town, uh, PE. Uh, and, and overall, uh, you know, we, while we were up, probably not as strongly as we thought coming into the, the World Cup. Well, uh, looking ahead, analysts believe this could be the trough uh, for Barlow World in terms of headline earnings anticipations that we should see some kind of rebound come 2011, especially with a number of the big contracts you've won now filtering through uh, to the book specifically. Are they being a little bit optimistic or should we be expecting a bigger uptick in your earnings profile? No, I think they, they've got it spot on. Um, and I think it's we can say that with some confidence because we've seen it start in the second six months of our financial year. So uh, we're pretty bullish about uh, the 2011 outlook uh, and beyond 2011. But uh, the first half of next year, I think we'll show substantial earnings growth on, on uh, a year ago.